colleagues, uh, we, uh, the House has resumed. We are debating the uh, Tariff Pacer Plus Amendment Bill. When we broke before dinner, Priyanka Radhakrishnan was speaking and she has seven minutes, 25 seconds remaining to speak, should she so wish to do. Otherwise, Otherwise, is... Uh, Madam Speaker. Oh, I call Alistair Scott. Phew. Just about... Sorry, I couldn't see. There were so many no, people no, no, standing I up over there. No, no, no. I wasn't clear, and um, we just about missed, uh, missed the call, so here we are. Speak. Oh, no, we took their call. Well done. Oh, we took their call. Very excellent, excellent. <laughs> so, um, Madam Speaker, it is um, a great pleasure to speak... Uh, on the PACER Plus, Tariff PACER Plus Amendment Bill. Uh, sounds like a Paper Plus advert or a uh, pacemaker advert, I'm not sure, but it is, does relate to trade agreements. Trade agreements are good things. They enable parties to get together and to mutually agree, beneficial, beneficial mutual agreement, uh, how they're going to structure and arrange things in the future so that their communities on both sides of the agreement, or multi in, in multilateral cases, many sides of the agreement, can benefit. It is also known as a win-win situation. If we can promote and uh, continue to, to develop and update these trade agreements that we have with counterparties all around the world. Uh, and it's not, and it's just because it might be completed doesn't mean it ever finishes. These trade agreements do evolve, do change. Uh, situations change so that these, uh, and, and as, as we know, we were the first uh, country to sign a free trade agreement with China, and as, as we also know, that is up for renewal and will be improved so that both parties can see the changes that have occurred over the years, intervening years, uh, and make amendments so, again, both parties can make, have mutual, mutually beneficial um, agreements. So we are talking about the PACER Plus, which deals with the Pacific Agreement on Closer Economic Relations. Uh, there are 11 countries involved. Uh, it is a, if you like, a cut-down version of a of a of a uh, 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 what, what what might be expected of, say, a TPPA agreement, in that there is no uh, reference. To um, there is no reference to the uh, is, ISDA. Is that the right term? ISDA uh, clauses. Is that right, Mr. McLean? Yeah. That's right. Exactly. So it's a very it's a it's a very simple. It's a starter for ten, if you like. Um, these trade agreements, as I say, are mutually beneficial. So I, I I can absolutely understand why generally both sides of the house are supporting it. But it is disappointing to see that the Green Party uh, uh, have put a minority view, a minority view into the report. And if I can just quote uh, from the Greens' minority report, we remain concerned that, among other considerations, the PACER Plus Agreement undermines efforts to promote Pacific regionalism. So if it does undermine the ability to promote Pacific regionalism, please explain how that is the case. Because no one's compelled or obliged to join these uh, agreements. It's an opt-in situation. Uh, if a country does not see the benefit, does not um, see the overall arching uh, benefit to the community, there's no obligation and there's certainly no uh, way that it would undermine uh, Pacific regionalism. In fact, it will promote Pacific regionalism. There are 11 countries uh, involved, um, mostly from the Pacific. So I'd like to hear from the Greens to explain how this undermines, as, in, as it says in the report, undermines efforts to promote Pacific regionalism. And then it goes on to say, reprioritises New Zealand's existing aid budget into problematic aid for trade initiatives. Why, why, is, why would that be problematic to um, promote a free trade agreement that is mutually beneficial so that all parties can benefit? And, and then finally it says, and burdens Pacific states with unfair export rules. 
burdens Pacific states with unfair export rules. So if it is, if it is unfair and it is burdensome on those parties, why would they sign into it? Why would they put their name to the paper uh, if it was burdensome and unfair and was um, essentially against their export or, or did not promote their export markets? So um, that's, that's what I'd like to hear from a Green speaker at some point. Because I see free trading... They won't speak on it? No? Because they, they've got nothing to say on it? No. No. So are we going to get a Green speaker to speak on it? No, it doesn't sound like we are. So, so um, Madam Speaker, because a free, tra free trade is a really good thing. So I'll give you a little example. No transparency. So I'll give you a little example. So um, we've got two islands, and one is very good at fishing, excellent fishermen. Both, they're the best on, in, the, in the region. And then you've got another island who are excellent at um, growing, I don't know, lamb. And the marginal cost for both those products in their respective countries is very low. They're really good at it. But the fishing country, the guy that's really good at fishing, he's hopeless at growing lamb. He just does not know how to graze sheep. He in fact, you know why? Because he, he doesn't have any grass, very little grass on the island. But he tries. He struggles. He needs to uh, diversify his diet. He wants red meat on his diet as well as fish. He's a little bit sick of fish, but he needs the red meat. So he continues to struggle away and uh, produce uh, very expensive <coughs> sheep. But the, but the problem that he has is that his government won't allow the really efficient lamb grower next door to bring in lamb uh, into his country. Uh, and, and wouldn't it be great if it did? Because the, the marginal cost of lamb over here is so cheap that if we can get lamb into the fisherman's country, that would free up all those guys struggling away trying to grow lamb, trying to produce red meat, and let them focus on fishing, yeah, yeah. which they're really good at. And you know, and then the, then the fishing guys, they've got more fishing guys fishing. They, they don't need to bother with the lamb because they've got a free trade agreement with this, this oh. crowd now, and they'll be able to import it cheaply. And you know what? They're really good at growing fish or fishing for fish. And hey, you know, presto, these guys over here, they're great at growing sheep, but are they fishermen? No, they are not. They wouldn't know how to bait a hook if, they, if their life depended on it. But they, they have been trying. They have been trying, and their government has in the past uh, supported them by putting barriers in place to protect their few fishermen, inefficient fishermen that they have on their island. And then, hello, hello, the free trade agreement is now in place, and uh, those guys that just did not enjoy uh, getting on a boat, they seek, they seek prone to seasickness, didn't know how to fish, they don't have to fish anymore. They can import the cheap fish from the guys who love fishing and are very good at it. And hey presto, these guys who were struggling away uh, growing lamb, they can now more productively and efficiently uh, provide fish, well these guys are the fishermen or the lamb guys, the fish, fish to the guys across the way. So that's the benefit of a free trade agreement. You focus on the stuff that you're good at, uh, you are able to be really productive and efficient at that thing, or that production, and you share, and you collaborate, and you share the knowledge and expertise and product uh, with the other country, who will, ha who, uh, uh, will uh, have to take away the barriers over time. And I think this agreement, coming back to the bill, Madam Speaker, coming back to the bill, it's, it does take time to take these barriers down. It's quite, as we know, in this country, it's, it's extremely uh, disruptive if we take barriers away very quickly, all in one hit. We've seen that here. Uh, this enables the barriers to be drawn out and reduced over something like 20 and 25 years. And of course, as time progresses over that 20 and 25 years, and the parties agree, mutually agree, those time frames can be shrunk and the, and the agreement can be amended so that both parties, again, <laughs> can find ways of agreeing uh, to mutually benefit uh, one another. And that's why um, I'm very pleased to see pretty much the Parliament, except for the Greens, um, support this agreement. They see the benefits and mutual benefit um, of supporting free trade agreements, and I commend this bill to the House. Malo e la mani. I call Madama Davidson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I will indeed.